Till my heart starts racing But I don't know if I like this chasing And playing and waiting around It's a shame that my hands start shaking All of the time when you're around me But this time, this time Hey guys, welcome back to the Moran family. So today's video is going to be about Everly. If you don't know who Everly is, she is our third daughter. When I was 12 weeks pregnant with her, I went, well we went into our genetic screening ultrasound. Everly was diagnosed with holoprosencephaly and trisomy 13. We were told that she would pass away very early on in my pregnancy or she would be stillborn, but I decided to still carry her. We got one hour with her after she was born. So today's video is going to be, I guess, us like chatting with you guys and a Q&A on like how it's been and just all of that stuff. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Do you think it made it harder knowing that she wouldn't make it versus not knowing? Yes and no, it made it easier, but it, it, was, it was harder too. Yeah, well, I think it's gonna be hard no matter what because mm -hmm. that's losing a child. But I feel like if we didn't know, it would have hurt made us a lot more. Yeah, because it would have blindsided us. Yeah, like we would have had the nursery all set up. We would have had all of her stuff. But I feel like it would have been harder on Layla too because she would have been confused why we're not coming home with a baby. So I feel like it was better for us knowing because we could have like processed, processed things more, talk about things. How has a birth and loss affected your marriage? really good question uh, well I mean it made us closer but at the same time it's it's still hard yeah it made us closer just being like just going through things together I mean me and her we've gone through a lot of things throughout our relationship and we've been together we always come out stronger nine years and exactly like she said we do come out stronger no matter what we go through we always at least we do it together you know but I will say though because I want this video to be like super raw and honest. I will say like maybe a month after, I would say it did kind of tear us apart. Because it was hard because we were grieving differently. Yeah. Like you wanted to be so open and you wanted to talk to me. But right after, I just like, I wanted to be alone. Like I didn't want to talk about it. I guess I was kind of like in denial a little bit. So it was hard because we were grieving differently yeah and, and that made it a lot more difficult when it came to expressing yeah. how we feel and stuff like that i'm more of like hey I'll, I'll tell you how i'm feeling i don't really have a problem communicating <laughs> and i'm it's so hard for me to express the way i feel but i've always been that way yeah always it's and then i think right now being like yeah it's been a couple months but it's still fresh mm -hmm. so it's still an open wound when it comes to talking about like having more kids or anything like that, then... That's a question we have, so we'll talk about that one more in a second. Okay, well, I guess we'll get into it later. <laughs> How and why did you decide to continue the pregnancy? So, for me, I just knew I couldn't go through with an abortion. I just, I felt like that would hurt me a lot more, and I just really wanted to give Everly a fighting chance because... Her heartbeat was always strong, even from the beginning, like the very first ultrasound that I got where she was literally like this small and she looked like a gummy bear. She was always kicking around like crazy. So from the beginning, just like hearing how strong her heartbeat was and just seeing her move around as much as she did, I just knew like I had to give her a fighting chance at life. And I really wanted to meet her, even if it was for like a few minutes. So that's why I decided to for me, it, it was a little more difficult than that. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm open to talking about how I feel, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to put us through that. And I, like, I love my daughter, and I'm glad for the time that we got to spend with her. But at the same time, like, how would we have grieved knowing that? Like, how how differently we would have grieved if it was earlier on, and if we had decided to terminate the pregnancy. But at the end of the day, like. I'm going to support my wife no matter what, and if that's what she wants us to do, then I'm going to be right there next to her. Whatever choice she made, like, I was going to be there to support her, because 
on it when it comes down to it you know it, it's both of our baby but it's her body and and she's going to be going through all of the like the physical aspects of it and i'll be going through the emotional and so i don't know when it came down to it it was is more how can i be there to support her so we i agreed to to keep on going and, and seeing our baby through how did you explain what happened to her to layla so we kind of both sat down with Layla and we, I'm not sure how we worded it, but I think we said that Everly was sick and there wasn't really like any medication we can give her to make her better. And there was a possibility that she wasn't going to come home with us and she would go home to God and she'd be a beautiful angel, always look down on us. So we didn't really go into too much detail on like what was wrong with Everly to Layla. But she knew that there was a strong possibility that Everly wasn't going to come home with us. And I think in the future, if, if Layla does ask, like, hey, whatever really happened, like, I wouldn't have any problem with it, explaining yeah, it to her. But tell it, her. once she's older and she can understand everything. Yeah, because she just turned six, so she wouldn't understand what holoprosencephaly is. Like, she wouldn't understand all of the details. So we kind of just told her, like, the basics and just prepared her for... Everly not coming home with us. Did you have any kind of hope that she might survive or did he just know she wouldn't? I'm pretty much a realist, so when it came down to it, when it, when it comes down to anything, you know, you always prepare for the worst but hope for the best. And I mean, that's just how I see things. So when it came down to it, of course, I hope that, you know, she can keep on living and that we would have three babies and have three girls to take care of and just to, you know, to bring her home with us like that was always in the back of my head like oh please god just you know give me that chance but the realest part of me is you know like i know the situation and i knew like how slim the chances of a miracle was i still prayed for the miracle but i i knew that it was is very rare that it might happen yeah i i agree i felt the same way like i always had that hope and i always prayed that she would come home with us but at the same time, I was being realistic and I knew, like he said, I knew the chances were very slim. How was your birth different than your other girls? I think my birth was way different. Like with Layla, my birth, I think Layla's birth was the hardest for me because I was so young, I was 18, I didn't handle my pain good at all. I was like screaming when I was not even dilated. I was begging for the epidural. And then also my nurses were really rude. Yeah, I think it was okay. because, again, we were so young, so we were treated differently. So with Layla, I think that was my hardest birth experience. With Aurora, it was literally just me and him in the room. There was no family at all because we were living in Hawaii when Aurora was born. And then with Everly, I really didn't have pain at all. And it was so fast with Aurora and Layla. My labors were 24 hours. And then with Everly, it was... I was because, induced with yeah, Everly. Induced. So I started the induction process at like 7.40 a.m. And then I gave birth to her at 6.41 p.m. So it was really quick compared to my other births. And then like I said, I was never in any pain. So it was, it was really different. And then also, even though I knew like the heartbreak was gonna come because I knew the outcome, but at the same time, while I was in labor, I felt at peace. Do the girls still ask about sweet Everly? Layla does all the time. Yeah, Layla asks about her. Uh, when we go to sleep, you know, I'll read them a story and then we pray before we go to bed and she always throws in, you know, just make sure we look over our they look over Everly while she's up give there with kisses. you. And give her kisses and hugs yeah. for us. So we talk yeah. about her all the time, like almost every single day. What is your favorite thing about Everly? Her chubby cheeks. <laughs> she has chubby cheeks like Rory. I think it was her curly hair. She, right? I think her hair was a lot more curlier than, yeah. than both of the girls. Yeah, I think because Layla is the one who mainly has curly hair and then Aurora's is kind of starting to curl at her ends. But Layla's hair was never super curly from birth it kind of just gradually started getting curly and curlier but when everly was born she straight up had curly hair which was so crazy will your family have any traditions dedicated to celebrating everly well 
since we moved into the new house, we plan on, on planting a tree for Everly. Mm -hmm. And so probably every year for her birthday, we'll probably go outside and, and spend time, you know, and and we'll probably just, we plan on um, planting a little bit of her ashes with the tree too, so that way yeah. it's like a piece of hers always there with us, even though we have her ashes with us. What is your best piece of advice for families going through what you went through with Everly? My biggest advice would be you know, love each other as much as you can and be there for each other. There's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days. Um, but even though we knew it was happening, for me, like going to go see Everly was the happiest moments for me. Just knowing that like, because obviously, I, I mean, yeah, there was times where I got to feel her kick, but I didn't feel her as constantly as Brittany did. And when I was at work, you know, I'd miss those opportunities. And so going to go to the ultrasounds and seeing her just on the monitor and seeing her kick around and seeing her move and hearing her heartbeat. I think those are the happiest moments for me. So just cherish the little things, you know, because not every day is granted. There, we could have been even less lucky. And one day, you know, she could have just stopped moving and inside Brittany's stomach. So luckily for us, she was still be she was still able to be born and, and still have that birth moment where we got to see her and, and hold her and, and listen to her while she she lived for that, that hour that she was with us. I think the best advice I would give would be to document everything. I mean, you don't have to be like us and put it out there all for the world. But I think just like record your baby moving in your belly, take bump pictures, um, go to different places and take pictures. Like we went to Disneyland because I know it might sound weird to some of you guys, but I really just wanted to take Everly to Disneyland because Disneyland is like my happy place. The girls love it too. He doesn't really like Disneyland, but I just really wanted to take her. So we went to Disneyland. Goodness, I was like far along already when we went. Yeah. But I took pictures there. So I would just document everything, like write down your feelings. I have a bunch of notes saved on my phone of like all of my thoughts and everything. So I would just really, like he said, cherish every single moment and document it. That way you have everything to look back on. How was it after? Did they immediately give you your time with her? Yeah, and as soon as she was born, they kind of just, you know, they let me cut the umbilical cord. They let me like wash her off and clean her. Yeah, and then, she was immediately placed on my chest. Yeah, and we got to spend as much time as possible with her. They didn't take her to run tests or anything like that. They asked us before on, um, if we wanted to. Yeah, but our birth plan was to not have her monitored. We didn't want her to, to be, be hooked and, up yeah, yeah, to any machines. And anything like that. Yeah, so when I was in labor with her, the only thing they were monitoring was my contractions. Did the nurses treat you differently in comparison to your other births? So like I said, with Layla, the nurses weren't the nicest to us. With Aurora, they were so sweet. And then with Everly, they were amazing. Like Yeah, I think those are the best nurses that we've ever had. Yeah, they like, for per, uh, pregnancy. Mm -hmm. They like went out of their way to make us as comfortable as possible. They made Everly, Everly like a special headband <laughs> because the one that I brought to the hospital was way too big. So they actually cut up a dress to make her headband. They went out of their way to, in the middle of the night, they tried to find somebody to... Come and pray for Everly. Yeah, to bless her. They even prayed with us, so they were amazing. And even afterwards, like, they sent us a card yeah, just to they, check they up on us. Yeah, they sent us cards. Those, were, those nurses were amazing, yeah. I think. And I'm really thankful that we had those nurses that we did. It was just amazing how everything worked out. And it was such a strange, like, like she said, we had to find a, a priest to come and bless Everly. And, it was so late that you know by it the wasn't time anybody around. yeah nobody was around even the ones at the church or at the at the hospital weren't around they weren't around yeah so the nurses were on the phone for the, a while they and were the nurse phone calls one of the nurses was able to get a hold of her mom which gave her a number for one of the, the people that go to church with her and mm -hmm. it turns out he was the um he was the chaplain at the fire department in the area and you know he was able to come through and it was so strange because he had lost his child too um it was a few years back, right? What are the what are the odds that we had found a priest so last minute, and that he had gone through something similar and knew, like the pain that we were going through? Yeah, and, and he it's... didn't he didn't have to come either because I can only imagine how hard it was 
for him to come into the room after after he experienced the same loss. We we're just really lucky and blessed. Says, when did her illness slash condition start to feel real? I think it felt real for me immediately because everything that they told us was very visible on all of the ultrasounds from the beginning. Like you could clearly see when they were taking pictures of her brain, you can see that it was just abnormal. So for me, it felt real immediately from the day that they told us something was wrong. Yeah, I think that was the same for me too. Is when they told us, it kind of just felt like the whole world had shattered and just fell on top of us. Have you or Benny seen or considered seeing a therapist slash grief counselor? We've talked about it, but- We haven't seen anybody. Yeah, we haven't seen anybody. We thought about it, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm comfortable with just talking with her and-, and Yeah, like and just getting through each it together. other and family. Yeah, and luckily we had the family we do to you know, to be there to listen to us, too. Because my daughter came naturally with a water break at 36 weeks. Was it calm even though it was induced? Yeah. When they told me that I was going to be induced, I was kind of scared about it. Because I feel like all of the stories that you hear about inductions are scary and it's hard. But like I said, I was never in any pain and it was a lot faster than I thought. I thought since you're being induced and you're kind of like going against your body because you're not going into labor naturally, I thought it was going to be this very long process and I was preparing for like a 24 hour plus labor, but it was really quick and it was a lot better. Like I liked how we were able to like actually prepare for going to the hospital and it was just so calm versus being in pain right away. and. I don't know. I liked it. I like being induced. Any regrets about the whole experience? Pregnancy, birth, postpartum? I don't have any regrets. I don't have any either. When will baby number four be coming? Well, for me, I think with Everly, it, it kind of separated us on, on wanting to have more kids at the moment. I want to wait and I want to give it a little more time because I don't know. I think it's too soon, but that's just, you know, that's how I feel right now is I, I'm not fully prepared to have another baby running around and, and run the possible chance, even though it's a very, very slim, slim chance that it could happen again. I think for me, I don't know if I can go through it again so, so early. For me, after Everly had passed away, I was kind of like scarred a little bit. I thought I would, I actually thought I would never want kids again. I don't think I've ever told you this, but that's how I felt for a while. I just, I couldn't see myself being a mom again and it was really hard but lately I've been kind of bugging him for another baby but at the same time I'm scared to go through that again or I don't even know if we would go through something like that again but I'm scared for the possibility for me personally I feel like you should never ask a woman when are they having another baby i get this question i'm not even kidding i get asked when i'm having another baby about like 10 times a day I'm not even exaggerating and like i said i don't think you should ever ask any woman that especially a woman who's gone through loss because that question can bring so much pain like i said i didn't think i would want any more kids so immediately after Everly had passed away and I started getting that question, it kind of like made me feel like, what's wrong with me? Like, why don't I want a baby yet? And it's hard, like even today, like it's hard when people ask me that question because like he said, we're not really on the same page with it right now. And that's okay, but it's just hard getting that question all the time. I'm nervous about having another baby. Any more babies? <laughs> so all of those questions. Was she as you expected her to look? Did you expect her to look the way she did? I think looking at other pictures of other children who had the same, same things kind of prepared me for how she was going to look. On Facebook, I was actually in a group who like all the babies had what Everly had. So they kind of had like similar things like the cleft lip and just certain things. So I kind of knew what to expect a little bit for what Everly was going to look like. So I wasn't really like 
shocked or anything when I saw her. Same for you? Yeah, I wasn't really shocked. I was just kind of, I was happy to see that there were still like, you know, these features that we saw that we noticed that like, hey, that looks just like Layla or hey, that yeah. looks just like Everly. Especially her chubby cheeks because she gets it from this one. Were you offered a C-section? No. So that was actually in my birth plan as well. I wondered if you were afraid of your girl's reactions. I was. Not afraid, but you know, a little nervous. Yeah. So we actually decided this like maybe a week before she was born. At first, we talked about it and we pretty much decided that we didn't want them to meet Everly because we knew that she was going to look different. So I was nervous that it would be too much for them to handle. But as labor started getting closer and closer and I was nearing like the end, I just knew deep down that they needed to meet their sister. So we decided that we wanted them to meet. Okay, so this is going to be the last question so it says did they have you in a special room when you gave birth to everly and after i gave birth in a regular labor delivery room but for postpartum they put me away from all of the families for us we were kept in the same room the whole time they never moved us because they wanted us to be as comfortable as possible so that is all of the questions we're going to answer today if we for some reason didn't get to your question or there's something you're still wondering you can leave it down below in the comments for us and we will try to get back to it as quickly as possible. I hope this video helped you if you guys are going through something similar. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the Moran family. Didn't say it with me. Don't forget to subscribe to the Moran, the Moran family. family. And we'll see you guys in our next video. Bye guys. Bye guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs>